When you're dealing with a flock of chickens or ducks that is say over 25 birds, feeding can be quite laborsome on a day-to-day -day basis, carrying around large buckets of feed day after day after day. And one of the things that I've come up with here on the farm to make feeding easier is a large automatic feeder. And this feeder is also good for those of you who are looking to leave your farm for a number of days without having to worry about your birds starving and without having to worry about someone coming to feed them every single day while you're gone. This large automatic feeder that I've come up with helps with both of those issues. And today I'm gonna to show you how I make a large do-it-yourself automatic feeder for less than $25. The basic materials that you're going to need for your automatic feeder are a mixing tub, board tub, and this 32 gallon garbage can. You can also use one of the 20 gallons I believe as well. And uh, the size, you can go up or you can go down, but the basic principle is still the same. So what we do is especially when you're at the store. You can get one of these at your local hardware store. We actually got these at Lowe's. We picked up the mixing tub over towards the lumber area near some of the uh, masonry aisles. And then in your, probably in your home organization aisle, you're gonna have your outdoor trash can here. And these will be uh, sturdy and heavy duty for lasting outdoors for your chickens and your ducks to use. And the trash can here should fit just right inside. Let me get a little snug right inside the mixing pan here. Where I got this trash can here for $15, and then this mixing tub here for only five. And then we kind of cut, we bought a couple bolts that will attach it, bring it all together. So for less than $25, you can make all this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut holes for the feed to come out of. Since it's gravity fed, and as you have this full of feed. Uh, with the holes down at the bottom, as the chickens eat from here, or the, the feed just will just go, and then as they need more feed, it will just slowly just drop down as they eat out of it. So this trash can here kind of has a line for us to go off of. So we're gonna probably take our saw, we're gonna cut there and there. I'm gonna go a little bit higher than this line here. I'm probably go to about right somewhere in there. We'll do the same on this side comes out here on this side as well as over here. So next we'll use our skill saw, circular saw, go ahead and cut these holes in. But safety first. I can't see anything with this blaster shield on. First hole there. <laughs> and this new DeWalt drill got from one of our viewers. Thank you, Matt Feldman, for getting this DeWalt drill. We actually really needed one, so thank you very much. And for those of you who want to know how you can support our channel, Make sure you check out the show notes below. There's a number of ways that you can do so. Put our drill bit in. Just like that. Yeah. Ready to go. Then I have my trusty sidekick here, son Micah. Ready to help out? Yeah. Okay, to drill our holes, we're going to carry it over here in the grass area. We're going to line our feeder up in the center close as we can and then we're to go through the inside to drill the holes and the reason you want to drill it from inside is you have these different ridges in the garbage can so we're going to drill in the low spot so we don't have a lot to put our bolt through Okay, Micah, can you hand me a bolt? Thank you. So, really not a set length for the bolts to use. 
Uh, but we are going to take a longer one to get it started off with to hold it somewhat in place. Actually, we'll take two. Okay. Got it? I got wet book. That way, as we turn it over to tighten up the nuts and, and bolts on here, hopefully we'll still be somewhat lined up. Okay, Micah, can you bring me the other nuts from over there? I got wet. And bolts. That's a nut, yep. Okay, those first two bolts that we put into place were just to hold it from shifting on us. We do want to push the, put the head of the bolt in on the bottom. That'll just keep it from hitting things and you don't want the, uh, nope, don't do that. <laughs> you don't want this part sticking out. So this is just to hold it temporarily. So we'll go ahead and put these in here. These will be our permanent ones. Alrighty, now we got the bolts together. I did go with some shorter bolts, so I would probably recommend a little bit longer ones than I used today. may want to try maybe an inch, inch and a half bolts to uh, secure your feeder with. Uh, we'll just bring in socket set and we'll tighten it up, and it should be ready to go with filling up feet. Okay, when you tighten it up, you don't want to go too tight because then you may crack your trash can and your mortar tub. I also do want to mention you could do this with one of the galvanized trash cans. It's just going to cost you just a little bit more. And uh, I'm a little concerned about doing that because I have seen that there are some cancer risks involved with galvan using galvanized materials. So there you go. So the next thing we're going to do is hook up our automatic water as well and then we'll bring it all together as a full operating automatic system. Okay so what we use for our watering system for our chickens and ducks is the water source is, comes from here. We haven't yet installed a gutter system to, to provide water to fill it up. Uh, right now we're just filling it, up, filling it up from our well water. So right now this one goes out to feed our flock in the wood, wooded area over there. And then we just moved chickens down there that we're setting that we were just making the feeder for, but now we're going to provide them with some water. I'm going to turn this off. Take this off. We'll attach this again here in a minute. Just a little bit of excess water. So we're going to attach this. This one will go to the chickens in the woods. This one will go to our new chickens. Connect them back that are in the woods. Go ahead and make sure this one's closed. Open this up for them to get water again. And then we'll be working on these right here. So we're gonna add this hose here. Okay. Then we're gonna connect these, this hose here. And then leave it closed. As Mike is running the hose all the way down to the chickens in our, our new area down there, I am going to be setting up our automatic float valve. I've already taken it out of the box and these are all the pieces that it comes from comes with and uh, I've already taken a look at the instructions. I think we picked this one up at Tractor Supply and it's just an automatic float valve and it looks really easy to put together. You take your washer and you just put it in the top right there. Then you take the float right in here and lines up. And you have a cotter pin, that's what it's called. And it just goes through right here inside. And you have to line up that float valve in there. The pin in there just goes through all of that, so that attaches your float valve. So and once it's in there, you'll need your needle nose pliers 
to bend this. Oh, no, I'll turn it this way. So I have a little bit more room in there. Take your needle nose pliers. Take the end of that pin and bend it so it doesn't come out. I probably need to bend it a little bit more. I'll just finish bending this. So it's still loose enough to move. But it's bent and it's not gonna, your pin's not gonna pull out of there. And then these are just your hangers for hanging the float valve on the side of whatever your, whatever container that you're using for the water. I think we'll probably put it down on this one. And then you just use these thumb tighten screws to clamp to your container. And then you just mount it however high you want your water. For our automatic water, the watering source that we typically use is a 275 gallon tank. But you could also direct connect to a well or whatever source you may be using for your main water. My preferred location to set up the feeder is right inside a chick shawl or chicken tractor or chicken coop that is large enough to fit the feeder in. And after that, I fill up the feeder. But another option would be setting up your feeder just on the outside of your chicken tractor or chicken coop with a covering over top, as well as having a covered area specifically for your feeder like we do here. So there you have it, that's my automatic chicken feeder as well as the automatic watering system that I use to automate my chickens whenever I'm away from the farm. And if you're doing this system for laying hens, you can simply have someone, trusted friend or family member come and gather the eggs periodically. Especially if it's summer, you definitely wanna make sure in the warmer temperatures that you're collecting the eggs. Uh, or when you get back, just throw those eggs out. You can also switch up the feed ratio so that way they don't produce as many eggs while you're gone. So those are some options to consider. But this is simply an example of what I do here on my farm and on my homestead and it works for me. You can take these principles and techniques and modify them to fit your context, your needs, and the needs of your animals. Well, I hope you found this video to be helpful and if you did, please let me know in the comments section below. Also below, there's some merch that you may wanna check out as well as some helpful resources that can help you in building your homestead. Well, that's it for now. We'll see you next time and as always, be strong and grow on.